part of Camp Hanover, which is the Presbyterian Retreat Center, about 680 acres. We've been here about 30 years, and it's been a wonderful place in which to live and work. My studio is right on the back of the garage, which gives me a very good place to work close to home. I'm an artist who is trained to work in a lot of different media and I still find myself working in a lot of various ones from oil painting to water media to the print making which is the main body of my work. Um, prints have been the best saleable type of artwork in recent years and I've been working with them. Instead of using metal plates to work with though, I use scrap cardboard for the base of my plate and on it I glue all sorts of different fabrics so the plate itself is a collage plate from which I print just as an artist would print from an etched plate but these are paper plates made with materials that are discarded and they're given a new life in this art form for instance in this print the clothing on the old man are my husband's old summer pajamas and I just cut the collar area out and glued it on the plate where I wanted the wrinkled collar and I cut out the shoulder seam area and glued it where I wanted those seams to show and did the same for the sleeve part the hands the face the hat the barn the cut out trees are all cut from old manila folders I use manila folders because they don't wrinkle as much when they're wet with glue the cows are cut from carborundum paper, which is a form of sandpaper. And these other darker toned areas are simply fabrics glued onto the plate. When I print one like this, I have to use separate inkings for each of the colors. So this particular print has four different runs through the press to get all the colors to work together and to be in registry so that they print correctly with them. Uh, I use the large press, I use wet paper, and my inks are oil inks. It's a tedious process to ink the plate, to wipe it off where you've got an ink where you don't want it, and to actually get it so that you can run it through the press so each color fitting on top of the other one comes out to make the final print. I keep recipe uh, cards over in here which gives me the record of how my colors work and it's a tedious process. The other side of the coin when I get tired of being so rigid and precise with all the printmaking I go to painting with water media and one of the neat processes that I've been using lately is one where I pour inks, cover them with saran wrap manipulate the saran wrap into different shapes and forms of colors let it dry and then I come back in and paint over it and to do that I just spritz my paper and then I drop into it various colors of ink go to my other dropper. And when I'm doing this, I'm very aware of where colors are going in relationship to each other when I begin to add some other colors. The painting on the easel in the back there was started this same way and then I went back in on it and painted in the light negative spaces behind the trees which made the forms of the trees in the painting. Sometimes I'll add salt to the paint when it's wet because the pigments coagulate around the salt and make wonderful little speckles within the painting that add to the variety of the colors and textures in the painting. And then I just take saran and lay it over the wet paper. 
lay the saran wrap down in on it and then you can manipulate the saran wrap to control where the pigments flow and the kinds of shapes they're going to make in them. You can do several coatings of pigment before you finally settle in on what you want to do. But all the different shapes and lines will be there and because the saran has covered the whole paper the lines tend to give you a rather unified composition in the way the pigments flow. And then I usually put a board on top and put them to rest for a little while for a day or two until it dries. I use just plain plywood boards which I sometimes staple the paper to and I cover them and I let it rest if you pull off the saran wrap while the paint's wet, you destroy the clarity of the images that you've gotten. The painting up here was done by beginning with a pour just like the one that I've done. But then I came back with a couple more pours on top of it. The final pour was white on the rocks. And then when those pours were finished, I took my watercolors and my gouache paints, which is just simply a, an opaque watercolor, and painted in all the little light areas behind the tree trunks. Basically I was painting in the negative spaces and all the trunks and the foliage toward the top are just simply the result of the pour. A lot of people ask me why I s use so much of nature's forms in my work. Trees, farms, and things like that. But I live in the middle of the woods and they're so natural for me. When I grew up and lived in Philadelphia, I used urban forms, but now I use mostly nature forms. And I also think it goes back to my early years in Japan, where nature is reverenced by the people. This tree in this particular print is the tree that's right outside my window that I see. And actually, it's sort of a tribute <laughs> to the time at 5 o'clock when I have to quit work and go in and get supper. The uh, bottom plate was made by embedding real leaves in acrylic modeling paste to make the forms of real leaves as opposed to the ones that I've cut out with the razor or cut with scissors. Sometimes I use the ones that I see and then again I come up with forms that I have not seen but I can make my own. This has been a very popular print of just an ordinary bush in November as it's losing its leaves. And again, I have used the same little plate at the bottom. And then I have a second version of it which shows you how different the same plate can be when different color combinations are used to make the print. When I make my plates, I take old scraps from my mounting of my prints and I use them for the backing of my plate. And on my plate, I put down all sorts of different paper cutouts that I've made, cutting them with, with little scissors. A lot of times, I also use acrylic modeling paste, which is simply acrylic with fine marble dust in it. And I can make all sorts of textural forms just by playing it across my plate, scooping it on. I can make texture by just brushing it across. I can make texture by playing with it, making other forms. I can come back again. And then on top of this I can glue some of the cutouts to get the different shapes that I may want to incorporate in the plate itself. I can also take cloth and cut or tear it and glue it across the plate. for other little textures and for this I use the acrylic gloss medium when I start I don't always know exactly what I'm going to get so there's a certain dialogue going on between the materials and my own aesthetic awarenesses and I glue it down
I don't worry about the outer edges of my plate because I usually cut it down after I've gotten most of the things on. Fabric will give me darker textures than the modeling paste will. And I can use all sorts of shapes and twist them around and then later glue my cutouts on top after I've played with where I'm going to place them. The neat thing about them is that I can play and try them in different places before I commit myself to where I want them to, to glue. Put the smaller one in the back. Then I'm going to need a different Shape. Oh, I'll just take an old Kleenex I have for a hill in the background. On which I'll put the trees. It will add textures and forms of its own which are in contrast to the textures from the material or from the modeling paste. Put that too thick in there. There we go. Now then, now I have a place to put the trees. carry my glue across because it too will give me some effect of atmosphere in the sky as well as holding down my trees and then I may come back with some cloud formations at the top of the modeling paste I haven't glued the onions down yet because I want to make sure that that fabric is glued on there more completely before I put them down. And basically this is one of the ways that I play with the different materials <clears throat> without a really preconceived form or idea. Sometimes with the, like with the old farmer that made use of my husband's pajamas, I do sketch him out on the plate first so that I know a little bit more of what I'm planning to do with him, but lots of times I just make them up as I play through the shapes. I love working with the modeling paste. It's like painting in shapes. When I cut out my shapes, I make sure, as for the little lines on the onions, to have cut narrow spaces rather than just cutting lines in. I've cut away some areas 
so that the ink will be trapped in those areas and will print as dark lines. That one I'll have to wait because it's down in the modeling paste. Then because onions always leave a lot of tags around from them, little bits of onion peel, I think I'll add some more. Some narrow little pieces cut from the Noah folder. I'm just about at the point where I'm going to leave this and let it dry, but before I do, I'm going to add some little scraps to give it a little bit more texture right around the onions. Years ago, someone gave me a box full of little holes out of computer cards, and I love to use them for added texture around things. And I put on some extra glue so that they'll hold down in case some of this has dried a bit. And I can sprinkle them on. I also used some shredded money that the Federal Reserve gave me. They own some of my things and treated us artists to packages of shredded money when we left. And I use it for texture sometimes. And I also save the fragments when I cut the trees. And I can add them for texture too. Feelings of the skins that fall off when you deal with onions. Okay, let me put a little bit more glue on that. My modeling paste is pretty well set there right now. Oops, that's a piece of a tree. Okay. There we are. Now I'll just let it sit for a while and then after all this is dry I may come back and add a lot more things. May have some fences or some um, utensils, digging utensils for in the dirt or something else. I really never worry about the fact that when I print it's going to be the reverse of what my plate is because I always feel if you have a good composition one way you'll have a good composition another way. At this point I know I'm going to cut my plate down and I will probably add some things that are in front of other things on top of the ones that are there. Oops, that's not glued. Other times I may come back and actually take a razor knife and cut through things because all the areas that are cut down into the plate print darker than some of the areas like these onions that are on top of the surface. So I can do a lot more manipulation with this plate before I'm finished for printing it.
When I make plates, I generally clear the table and I'm doing a whole batch of them, one right after the other. While I'm waiting for this one to dry, I'll be working on another one. And it makes it easier with my small studio to concentrate on one type of work at a time. When I get to printing, then my table's cleared, and this is cleared, and I have a big water pan here, and my blotter's here, and then I can ink my plates at my little table, soak my paper in the water, dry it, run it through the blotter so it's not dripping wet when I go to print it on the press behind me. I knew when I married a Presbyterian minister, after I got my master's degree, that I was going to have to work twice as hard to continue as an artist as any single man would have to do who could work full time at his artwork. I was sure that I was going to continue with my artwork because it had always been such a part of my life there was no way that it could not be. And so even when my children were young, and I have four children, I still kept my hand in in painting oils and watercolors which I exhibited and I did a lot of book illustrating which jobs which I could do at home. Then when, once my children got old enough to go to school and were away from home during the day, then I began to work much more full-time in the studio. I had to learn the discipline of leaving the housework and coming out to the studio and going to work and then catching up with the housework and other things when, once the children got home from school. I think keeping my hand in, even though it sometimes meant burning the midnight oils, was the secret to developing as an exhibiting artist. If I hadn't done that, there is no way I could have gotten back in as well as I did once the children were coming along in school. Uh, I entered juried shows as a way of finding where I stood in relation to other artists and having to work for uh, preparing for these shows was a good discipline for me. I never went in search of galleries but rather as a result of exhibiting in the jury shows people began coming to me and asking me to exhibit and really once I got into collagraph making the printmaking that was when my career really took off because it was a new way of working and there were very few exhibiting collagraph artists. Uh, at the same time I have always exhibited and entered in shows some of my paintings and my other work. 